so ma'am i have been following you since my pg prep days uh, mm-hmm. so i was a regular follower or a subscriber of your youtube content because i had done my uh, bachelor's and masters in literature and i was quite confident about it so i would have probably gone for self preparation but because i had a very severe time constraint i felt that i need some support uh, i wouldn't right. be able to manage it all on my own so which is why right. i decided i resonated with your teaching method since the very beginning uh, mm-hmm. and I, i felt that the most interesting part was uh, how interesting you make all of it sound so there were mm-hmm. times when i was not enough motivated uh, of course all of us go through that but then i would just ask Absolutely. myself a simple question if not study what else would i do and the options would be i would either scroll through reels or i would watch a movie and i would be like isn't reading about novels as interesting as watching a movie uh and that became possible because of the interesting video lectures so i think that was a big uh, motivation factor to study uh, because you made it sound interesting and uh, i resonated I with that method so i think that really worked for me Hi Bhakti. Hello ma'am it's so good to see you in person virtually. <laughs> Thank you so much lovely seeing you and you have such a sweet smile i must say. Oh my god. I I, I was very uh, happy to see your name in the list so Bhakti as a name is very very near to my heart so we are very oh. religious um, my entire family is very religious and bhakti is a word <laughs> which we uh, speak so many times in the day uh, symbolically yeah. so you have a very beautiful name and a very beautiful smile ma'am that's very kind of you thank you so much <laughs> so i'm going to have a long conversation with you i have a sure. bunch of questions lined up which i would want to ask uh, you so that a lot of other aspirants can get uh, inspiration from your journey Yeah. uh so but then before that a big big congratulations on clearing net not just from me but from the entire team of arpitakarva.com we all are very very proud of you thank you ma'am thank you so much and you know i have troubled your team so many times but they have been uh-huh. very kind and patient to always respond on time so thank you for all your help <laughs> thank you so much we as teachers as a team it is our job to be of uh, the help of all the students because i know that you know preparing for a competitive exam is a difficult task in itself yeah. and as teachers it is our moral duty to make it as easy as simple as we can for the students yeah. uh, so that you know with our guidance and your dedication you can crack it in like uh, with a big um, celebration Yeah. So uh firstly I would want to know more about you Bhakti. I want to yeah. know from where are you? Where have you done your graduation, post graduation? How has been your um, you know uh, this journey with uh, figuring out that you want to appear for this exam? So how this all happened? Yes. Uh, so I'm basically from Amravati. It's a small district place in Maharashtra near Nagpur. Yes. Yeah. I I know uh, about it. So right. uh, that's where I did my schooling till 12th standard. Uh, I appeared for um, uh, all the engineering entrances, JE, mains, advanced, CT. Uh, I did it from science, and then I shifted to literature. Uh, I did my bachelor's in English literature from uh, Pune, uh, and thereafter I did my master's from Savitri Bai Phule Pune University. Pune. Uh, and I just yeah. uh, did my master's uh, this year or last year, or uh, should we say it? Yeah. And then I appeared for NET. So this was my third attempt. Uh, in my previous two attempts, I had not qualified NET, uh, but in this attempt, I cleared for JRF, and I was also working. Okay. So I prepared with a job. Uh, job. Oh my God, yes. that is such a big inspiration because clearing JRF and that too with the uh, like with the limited time that you get after yeah. you're already occupied with the job is a big thing. And uh, there are so many so many things that I think. Uh, all of us together are going to learn from your story because not qualifying two time and then still not giving up and sitting for the third attempt getting a grf it is a it is really really inspirational because a lot of people they kind of leave net halfway 
since they are not able to like clear it in first second attempt and there are people who who don't even think it is possible to clear net with job or with um, you know if uh, there's a lady who's a housewife or if there's a boy who is uh, currently uh, going through post graduation doing his ma so because of the time constraint people think that it is nearly impossible so your story of getting a grf in spite of like so many things that happened which wasn't very suitable for a student uh, so to say uh, it is so inspirational so thank you so much for joining thank us today no and ma'am. thank you for all my um, pleasure thank you so much for having me thank you thank you great so we'll start from the very beginning i want to first yes. understand from you that uh, you know the moment you decided that okay you're going to appear for net so very first time when you saw the syllabus on the site of ugc yeah. uh, what was your reaction and what did you think that how are you going to begin the preparation right so uh, ma'am the reason i could not clear my previous attempts uh, was mm-hmm. the fact that i did not take it very seriously because i did mm-hmm. not know what opportunities it kind of opens up for you so i feel there's right, also this right. gap. as a student i lacked that awareness of where this exam would take me uh, which is why it right. was just a, a kind of a mindless activity that i performed i just went along right. with my peers to appear for the exam uh, but this mm-hmm. was the attempt where i actually seriously prepared for it uh, and when i saw the syllabus i think every aspirant would relate to me i thought you know uh, why did they not simply mentioned anything and everything under the sun because <laughs> it's almost everything uh, they have exactly. kept all the genres and all the periods so uh, i felt that it was humongous and i was overwhelmed in the beginning uh, but as i gradually progressed i started to get a hold of the syllabus and i actually started enjoying it very really honestly wow wow that is wonderful enjoying the process of preparing for a competitive exam i think is the most beautiful thing that can ever happen to an aspirant because see this um, clearing net clearing grf is a very momentary happiness in the scheme of life if you look at your life uh, a time span of 70 80 years that you spend on earth these little uh, success moments of success that we kind of have multiple times in our life they are just momentary but then the preparation and the journey that leads to the success is a very very long stretch journey you have in yourself seen three attempts and a uh, a good uh, one one and a half years of preparation span which we are going to talk about so yes that, making that beautiful making that enjoyable is a great a great thing yes so and i goes to you for that yes i can't really agree more to you i think it's the journey that matters more than the destination i had always exactly. loved literature but i think during this process i fell in love with it even more uh, and now when i look back i don't feel as if you know those were very difficult days and i'm so glad they are over I just have a smile on my face, and I feel those were good days that I spent in the company of literature, and that was really one of the best phases of my life. The preparation wow. phase, I really enjoyed that phase. I, I really want that anybody who's uh, going to listen to this interview actually pauses here and just reflects back and takes a pledge that okay, if they can make literature their passion, then this journey is going to. acquaint them with so many new writers so many beautiful stories so many undiscovered uh, philosophies which yes. is going to change their perspective change their outlook towards life towards society and that is what literature is all about like um, i remember back then in 2018 when i started this platform it was on 14th of uh, february which was uh, valentines day as well as um, uh, basant panchmi so basant panchmi is symbolic of uh goddess saraswati who is the uh, right. you know devi of knowledge and knowledge. valentines day symbolic of love so i always had this unending love for literature so i wanted that why not just uh, keep a day reserved for a romantic relationship why not look at uh, from a very different lens and see that okay how can we love so many other things in life literature for that matter can be one of the most uh, precious um relationship that we can That's cherish throughout our that. life yeah, and and yeah. the way you've been narrating your story i can actually so much resonate with my own story and i can see yeah. those um, uh, you know those threads joining which is so beautiful to see and i'm so glad that you qualified grf and you're going to teach so many brilliant minds on um, on this earth and i i can't just tell you how overwhelmed i feel when i see that okay teachers like you are going to take the lead of 
um, ed- Indian education system and going to inspire so many minds out there. Ma'am, you're one of the greatest inspirations for that. I think you reflect Thank a lot so of passion much. while teaching, and uh, it's it's natural that the same is reflected in your students as well. Going ahead in future. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And um, all credit I would give to my teachers um, from school time. I think all of them have kind of made this possible. To um, I would not say that they kind of just inspired me to take literature and lecturership as a career option. but they kind of present them themselves as an epitome that i feel i felt that okay why not i can be one of them uh, right. if they can have such a strong imprint on my mind i would love right. if i can have such imprints on the minds of other young minds in india so yeah i would just pass on your thanks to them <laughs> <laughs> sure. okay. okay so the next thing that i want to talk about is um your daily schedule daily structure but before that i want to also uh, want to know from you that how was this journey of giving three times net different from each other so what what changed in this course of time yes uh, so yes. as i said the first attempt was almost uh, unworthy of counting uh, it wasn't a serious attempt uh, the second one uh, collided with my uh, ma final exams uh, with my oh, uh, semester end okay. exams and mm-hmm. i was very very serious about my uh, semester and exams so i could not really donate uh, much time for net prep mm-hmm. so again mm-hmm. uh, i was short of time but this time i had decided and also because my job uh, was of teaching so i used mm-hmm. to teach in a college uh, so i that is where you know when i actually started teaching and i interacted with my students i learned what a joy it is Uh, to interact with such young minds, and act- mm-hmm. so they were actually my source of inspiration, and which is why I decided that this time I have to clear it. Uh, and my daily schedule was something like my day started quite early, uh, around five five thirty in the morning, uh, because okay. my working hours were seven thirty to one thirty. So I had to work in a college from seven thirty to one thirty. I used to have around three to four lectures every day, so for that I had to prepare a lot as well, uh, apart from my working hours. so initially that used to consume a lot of my time and i couldn't find time for preparation uh, but then i made it a routine that somehow i find time in college and i just try to wrap up my lecture prep in college time so that i can uh, devote remaining time for net preparation so my afternoons were devoted to uh, net uh, say from 2 pm to around 6 pm 5 pm was for net uh, and then i used to work out also <laughs> for around an hour wow. hour and a half in the evening and then again revise at night and then go back to sleep so this was more or less the routine for 3 or 4 months uh, i hardly took breaks there were no weekends or anything uh, but i honestly i did not really miss out on anything i did everything that i wanted i was also pursuing my hobbies alongside so i i didn't let this exam over occupy my life in a way i took it very practically uh, i devoted whatever time i could and i did uh, i tried to make it as optimum as possible instead of letting wow. it uh, occupy all of my mindset and my life wow that is that is wonderful like balancing so many things together it is such a great um, quality that a person can have and um, i i really loved um, to hear when you said that uh, i did not take any breaks any weekends and yet at the same time you made time for important things like working out your hobbies so so you know it is such a holistic thing that you um holistic routine that uh, you followed for the last four months very very nice i'm i'm really uh, impressed and as a working professionals um i uh, professional i would also want to understand that what challenges did you face like one of them you mentioned that you had to prepare for the lectures which was very time consuming other than that like uh, there must be some administrative commitments in the college Uh, or okay. there might be times when you have to stay longer in the college for yes. some meetings so how how did you find time during those days yes uh, actually ma'am uh, my colleagues uh, or my mentors all of them were very very supportive uh, even my students were extremely supportive so i was really blessed in that regard and i really want to take this opportunity to thank all of them uh, but yes having said that you do encounter challenges just a couple of days before the exam uh, i faced a very difficult uh, a challenging situation at my workplace uh, which took a heavy toll on my mental uh, space and it uh, also sort of translated into a physical pain uh, i had heavy oh, headache in right. all of those things 
but then at the same time my colleagues my students they were all there to support me uh, to say that you know we have got your back and you have to do this so i really cannot be enough thankful to all of them i think uh, i'm very very fortunate to be working in such a cordial yeah. and cooperative environment apart from that of course time constraint was definitely there uh but i realized that uh, it's not always necessary that you give the 100% it's only important that you are giving your 100% uh what i mean by that is the ideal 100% for this exam would be studying 6 to 8 hours a day uh but for me it wasn't possible with my work and my commitments i could only devote 3 to 4 hours now that might not be the ideal 100% but that was my 100% and i Wonderful. did that i think we should uh, you ever if you decide to write a book or to publish a blog or anything uh, which you make public ensure that you put this line this is so beautiful and i'm i'm really touched okay that it is important to give our 100% just like we say all these great leaders said that you are your biggest competition you don't have to look here and there to see okay who is going ahead who who is uh, ahead in that lane of uh, competition you have to see where were you yesterday and ha- have you made any progress today that is all what counts so in the in those similar lines i i remember uh, you saying the same thing that it is important that we give our 100% it can be different for everybody but still like if we devote our 100% that i think um the entire universe conspires to help us support us and uh, in um, in hindu mythology we have this beautiful word called um, pura jagat jo vasudev kutumbakam ka hai ki we all are connected so hame pata nahi chalta kis roop mein kaun hamari madad karke chala jata hai so that is just universe ways of saying that you giving your best child and i'm there with you i'll support you with all what i can yeah. that is so beautiful wonderful wonderful very touching um next thing that i want to talk about is um you know how did you balance your preparation between paper 1 and paper 2 how much time did you devote to both the papers and how important do you think are both of both of these papers are in the preparation is it that any one paper you feel is more important should be given more time to or is it equal yes uh, first of all uh, in terms of importance i think both are equally important uh, because both the questions carry two marks each there is no uh, you know difference in that <laughs> Uh, but i'll be very honest that i really did not prepare a lot for paper 1 because paper 1 was always my strength i was good at it since the beginning even in my previous mm-hmm. attempts i failed because i scored uh, very poorly in paper 2 uh, my score in paper 1 was always decent so uh, that had been a, a sort of uh, a good area for me so i did not really uh, think a lot about it but i did prepare uh, i referred to this book uh, that everybody knows about it was by kvs madan uh and i used to solve it whenever i used to get time uh i did not really uh, focus a lot on people and development and environment and all those things because that was something i wasn't good at and i had decided my strategy was to play on my strengths and not on my weaknesses Wonderful. because i had time constraint so uh, aptitude uh, di that was my kind of uh, strength so i decided to shape that better and score in those areas instead of focusing on the uh, topics which i am already weak at because i did not have the time to uh, time time yeah and i think this is very um, very rightly said by you that it is important that we play on our strengths even in life yeah. uh, the reason why most of the people are successful in their own fields be it lata mangeshkar sachin tendulkar uh, dipika padukone any any field you take and why are these people successful they kind of understood that what they are good at and they worked more upon that uh sachin tendulkar would not have done as brilliantly as what he did in cricket if he decided out okay let me be a consultant or let me be a banker because yeah. that was not his strength so he kind of realized it you have to definitely work upon your strength uh, just yes. like you said that paper 1 is equally important you have put in efforts to get those marks in paper 1 as well but then yeah realizing that okay um let me not just go and look for those two three questions uh, on current affairs which is going to be very very time consuming but not very uh, great in terms of cost benefit analysis that okay 100%. the yes. time i put in and the uh, number of questions i get correct uh, exactly. based on that time is very very low 
that's so true yeah. so true now um, my favorite part of the interview i would want to talk about paper to preparation and i yeah. i know that uh, the answers that you're going to give like even before you start speaking i know that all of them are going to come from a very uh, wise mindset where you have kind of given a lot of thought to how do you want to channelize your preparation so that you don't um, you don't commit mistakes which cost you marks so from that angle a lot of students who might be doing certain mistakes in their preparation journey there are there must be students who are um, either devoting too much time on topics which are not relevant so they are kind of uh, going to get guidance from you uh, so my first question in this particular series of paper 2 is that how did you uh, decide that okay this is how i'm going to plan my four months so when you saw the syllabus how did you decide that okay this this is the portion i'm going to cover in the first month second third fourth yes uh, my simple yes. strategy was the division of labor so you break it into okay. smaller parts uh, uh, in my earlier attempts i had referred to uh, source books uh, it was routledge and abrams and i would split up pages i would set a target that i have to complete these many pages uh, in okay. this attempt of course i was uh, take in help from the uh, coaching right the online coaching that you offer uh, which is wonderful so i had set up a target of number of lectures uh, i have to complete okay. around say 30 or 40 lectures per day uh, i would make notes and i would revise them so i had broken it up into really really small fragments a monthly target okay. weekly targets and then daily targets and i used to try wonderful. and follow those targets every day and keep a check uh, on every say week or month so that was wow, basically wow. my strategy wonderful like uh, breaking down uh, bigger targets into smaller actionable steps again is something that uh, is very very helpful in any kind of big milestone that you want to cover so very rightly said and um, again uh, going back to paper 2 that uh, which topics or areas uh, yeah. while preparing or before even starting your preparation yeah. did you think are the most crucial ones where you you're going to focus more of your energy on Yes, so I had focused uh, almost most of my energy on four topics: uh, British literature, literary theory, literary criticism, and uh, I also did Indian literature because I okay. saw that it is gaining more and more focus by net in previous few years. So these right. were my four areas of focus. Uh, of course, British literature consumed most of my time and energy, uh, so I devoted um, my entire dedication to that while I was de- doing that. Uh, then i started with uh, criticism and theory and then i moved on to indian literature having said that it doesn't mean i didn't want to touch other topics but again i had the time constraint time so right, right. i had to make sure that i'm really good at what i'm doing instead of doing everything so i focused and, on these four topics and one very important thing that you just said uh, that giving your 100% so you kind of realize that okay looking at the time that i have let me first touch upon the most important topics and Uh, what you did was wonderful because british literature for any net aspirant who goes through pvc or paper he can very vividly see that 50% paper comes from british literature yeah. about 20 to 25% paper comes from criticism and theory yes. and as you said indian literature is gaining more prominence so we can expect about 10% paper from that section so you kind of cover 80% and you exactly. left 20% but this 80% you worked so uh, so properly uh, covering it thoroughly that you kind of cleared your jrf just based on the 80% knowledge that you had you didn't yes. have to like go through the entire 13 module thing that yes. is wonderful yes. wonderful so what study materials or resources did you use for paper to preparation oh uh, yes as i said uh, before this attempt routledge and abrams were my fundamental resources which i have been using since my pg prep Uh, but right. this time i heavily relied on your uh, classes and the notes that you provided uh, because again i had decided to trust one entity and not look for uh, a lot of material because that is also very puzzling at times so i had decided to keep my faith in one place and just go with it and i'm very happy that it truly worked for me thank you so much um, again uh, another interesting uh, you know thing that i uh, kind of uh, want to emphasize more on is that trusting any one source so i i would not say that um, my resources are better than what others are providing in the market definitely there are different teachers having different uh, teaching methodology and i appreciate 
all of us who are working in the same spectrum with the same mindset that we want to help students out in their journey the only thing is you have to kind of figure out which teaching methodology you resonate with like i am a very visual learner so uh, if you've seen my uh, video lectures also video that lectures. we've just started yes. all of them are made with an intention that those images those mind maps those charts they get imprinted in your brain so that yeah. it becomes easier for you to memorize so many uh, facts and figures correct, correct. about so many novels so that is my teaching methodology i i don't change it because that worked for me and i have seen that working since past 6 years for so many aspirants yes. there might be somebody other who has a different teaching methodology you have to choose and decide that okay yeah. i kind of connect more with this teacher so like yeah. um, i want to again uh, go back to this thing that um, mm-hmm. how did you choose or uh, us like how did you research and select that okay our online coaching platform will suit your needs the best yes so ma'am i have been following you since my pg prep days uh, mm-hmm. so i was a regular follower or a subscriber of your youtube content uh, okay. and honestly uh, if i wasn't working i wouldn't have considered a coaching option because i had done my uh, bachelor's and masters in literature and i was quite confident about it so i would have probably gone for self preparation but because i had a very severe time constraint i felt that i need some support uh, i wouldn't right. be able to manage it all on my own so which is why right. i decided i resonated with your teaching method since the very beginning uh, mm-hmm. and I, i felt that the most interesting part was uh, how interesting you make all of it sound so there were mm-hmm. times when i was not enough motivated uh, of course all of us go through that but then i would just ask Absolutely. myself a simple question if not study what else would i do and the options would be i would either scroll through reels or i would watch a movie and i would be like isn't reading about novels as interesting as watching a movie uh, and that became possible because of the interesting video lectures so i think that was a big uh, motivation factor to study uh, because you made it sound interesting and uh, i resonated with that method so i think that really worked for me thank you so much i think um... our team is putting in so much efforts to get these videos out because uh, mm-hmm. it is a very le- very very laborious uh, task and i'm sure doing I'm sure. it for so many writers and so many works it's a very herculean task uh, yeah. but then the energy that we get to make this possible because it's a very heavy on budget project also so many people are involved sure. and all of that is happening um, but then uh, we just made this possible because the kind of feedback we get from students like you who love to study and our lectures make them study even more or make them not feel bored so that is yeah. the kind of motivation that um, uh, you know just moves us forward that okay there are 100 videos that we have done let us just uh, make next 100 this month and we've successfully completed 700 so far and i think sustaining the 700 ka journey could not have been possible without the wonderful feedback we've got from you guys So thank you so much for supporting the video lectures. I I really love uh, the kind of feedback I'm receiving. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for being so vocal about it because at times you know um, we are also humans. We we kind of want to hear from our students that okay ma'am uh, we studied for two more hours because the lectures were so interesting right. i thought of sleeping yes. or scrolling through instagram but then your lectures were interesting enough so i decided to like listen to five lectures rather than scrolling through leads that is a motive like that is a big motivation for us so thank you so much for that you really make us uh, you really make our day uh, thanks to you ma'am all thanks to you <laughs> thank you thank you okay so next um, thing that i want to uh, ask you i think uh, would be what was your note making strategy like did you make notes and um, h- how uh, relevant were your notes in your preparation yeah. um ma'am um, i think uh, i 100% based my preparation on note making uh, i made notes for everything that i read uh because i i think this is a very subjective thing for some people uh, different things might work you have to figure out for yourself what works for you yeah. uh in my case i felt that i really need to have something uh, in a written format and that too in my own handwriting uh because then i can uh, revise it very quickly the revision process takes uh, very less efforts uh, if mm-hmm. i had the notes uh and again because of the time constraint i had to make sure that i am saving as much time as possible note making is a is an extremely time consuming process to begin with uh, but if you get that done it saves lot of your time afterwards uh, 
so After, i made notes. exactly uh, i had around say 500 to 600 pages notes uh, and even on the exam day i had to leave by 6:30 in the morning but i woke up at 3 in the morning and i revised all of those 500 600 pages wow. and which is why i was feeling quite relaxed and calm uh, while i was appearing for the exam because i had just brushed it up very recently so i think notes mm-hmm. have definitely helped me a lot in my journey wow wonderful and uh, what you just said makes so much sense now that um initial process is very time consuming but the kind yeah. of relaxation you get after your notes are there and how quickly you revise it just like you said that 6 o'clock you had to leave for the exam center and uh, 3 to 6 in 3 hours you kind of revise the entire syllabus it yes. is such a big relaxation on the exam day that you're thorough with everything and you're ready to tackle that paper wonderful wonderful um again one important thing about self study to since you've prepared two times on your own um yeah like why did you feel that there was a need to join a coaching institute uh, in your third attempt yes uh, so again ma'am i would say uh, i'm not saying that it's impossible to do it by self preparation as i said i would have also done it uh, if i had the luxury of time uh, but this yeah. is so humongous that sometimes it's easy for people to get misled uh sometimes you cannot really figure out what is important uh, what is it's very important to know uh, what topics to leave uh, as you know to know what topics to study in depth so i think sometimes mm. the preparation can be misleading sometimes you end up giving uh, a lot of time or a lot of attention to unimportant uh, areas. areas so i think for right. that uh, a coaching can be really helpful uh, yours was definitely helpful for me so that my focus and my exam oriented mindset was maintained Uh, because Maybe, for people yeah. like me who love literature, sometimes we get so engrossed in reading <laughs> that we keep reading a single novel for say eight, ten days, and then we realize, mm-hmm. oh, we are here to prepare for net and not uh, to do PhD on a single novel. Wow! So I wow. think that well is also said. a challenge. Uh, so, which mm-hmm. I think that was uh, kept in limits, and uh, the exam-oriented mindset was maintained very well throughout the preparation. Wonderful, wonderful. I think that is that is what uh, any coaching institute. Uh, I I would not say what they aim to do, but then that is where a coaching institute kind of fits in your preparation journey, uh, telling you what to study, how much to study, what to skip, and what to yes. focus more on. So that that is something that uh, is really really helpful when you don't have so much time in your hand, because then yes. you don't have time to study non relevant topics at all. You every yes. minute counts. Yes. so you cannot uh, just have that luxury of time ki okay theek hai aaj thoda kam pad liya to chalega yeah. right right another interesting thing is uh, about revision because i i kind of i love this word revision i have spoken about it so many times in my lectures and i keep telling this because a lot of people they kind of feel ki bas syllabus ek bar cover ho gaya that, and that is where the job of the student is done but mera mana ye hai ki ले दे के सब लोग जितने लोग नेट में बैठते हैं सीरियसली वो सब सिलेबस एक एक बार तो कर ही लेते हैं जितना yes. भी वो पढ़ते हैं हर आदमी डिफाइन करता है कि मेरा सिलेबस क्या है ओशन में से मुझे yeah. इतना ही कवर करना है बट देन दोज हु टॉप एंड टॉपर्स लाइक यू हु नॉट जस्ट क्लियर नेट बट ऑल्सो जे आर इट काइंड ऑफ स्वेयर बाय रिविजन सो वॉट इज योर रिविजन स्टोरी लाइक वॉट रोल ऑफ वॉट वॉज द रोल ऑफ रिविजन इन हेल्पिंग यू क्लियर द नेट यस Uh, ma'am i don't think uh, i need to say it again that revision is as important as accumulating knowledge it certainly is uh, but i would again be very honest that i could not really manage uh, the best revision strategy i used to hear interviews i have heard your story that you had revised seven times before you appeared for net uh, and i would slightly get intimidated by such stories because i felt that i don't have that kind of time uh, so i did not revise so exhaustively uh but what i did was i tried to make learning a continuous process uh, as in of course i'm devoting only 3 or 4 hours every day but then while i'm working out while i'm traveling i'm just asking questions what did i read today uh which author came first and then uh, who came the next what were the order of the works uh, what is the theme of this work so my mental revision uh, would keep going on throughout the day even if i was doing something else so i think i compensated my uh, lack of uh, revise a lot of times by this mental strategy of revision uh, and wow. then again i managed to do it a few times before the exams i must have revised it at least three or four times before the exam and one last preparation on the exam day as i said 
so i really Perfect. cannot stress enough on revision i think uh, you might read a lot but if you don't revise it's almost like not having read it at all so i think Wonderful. it's definitely Wonderful. important i think uh, so far the kind of answers that you've given resonate so much with my learning philosophy and i would want to stress again on the points that all these things that anybody is listening to it is very important that you kind of make a note of it and try to inculcate it as a habit because see those who are not very um, keen on revising they kind of ignore it and they'll do it just right before the exam by the time it is too late because you've already forgotten so much information yes. and it is and very very disheartening uh, to know that but i think uh, that is also because revision is a very uh, difficult task to do it's mentally exhausting exactly. you get very tired uh, by the end you are you know you challenge your mind so many times you force exactly. it to recall and remember so i think it's a tiring activity exactly it is just like workout right because yeah in the entire day we we kind of go here and there we move we move our hands legs everything but it is not tiring but then when you're doing strength training when you're putting dumbbells resistance bands that one and half hour or one hour of intense training session kind of exhausts you so much but that is where the muscles are built like even if i go around doing all the household work my muscles are not going to get built but that one hour that i spent in the gym which is very very taxing very hard on uh, my muscles that is where the muscles are uh, built so i think that is how it is uh, no pain no gain philosophy <laughs> true true and how did you handle that stress and anxiety that students generally feel a week before the exam when they are kind of nervous they, they know that it is approaching you still have an idea that okay this is a portion which i have not touched upon and i'm yeah. just banking on these four units that i'm thorough with and i'm going to go and sit in the paper based on the knowledge that i have acquired so far yes uh, i think uh, ma'am even i had a similar experience i remember i called my sister one week before the exam and i said that you know i think my strategy has gone wrong and i wouldn't oh. be able to make it to jrf this time uh, so probably i'll do it again another time uh, because i wasn't remembering very well in the mocks uh, i felt that i'm forgetting some of the points and which is why i was mm. becoming very anxious uh, but then i realized that that anxiety won't add up to my uh, knowledge anymore what will do mm. is probably a pinch of optimism so i decided that i would be 100% optimistic because that would enhance my chances of getting selected so i was very positive and i decided to go ahead with it give it my 100% uh, and surprisingly on the exam day i was extremely calm because i was quite confident that i have again i have given my 100% i have done whatever sure. i could do uh, and also i had quite a practical approach to it so even if i couldn't have done it unfortunately i think i would have picked up again and appeared again wow uh, i don't think i would have attached my worth to this exam of course it's important wow that is so wonderful and that is you you kind of just said what a lot of people uh, kind of realize internally after a long therapy session so uh, therapy is this basically most of us they we struggle with the self image issue that anything that we're not able to accomplish we kind of relate it attach it to our self worth that oh hum to capable hi nahi hai main to insaan hi bekar hu main to insaan hi hard working nahi hu main to insaan hi nikamma hu all of these words that we kind of associate with ourselves which is very natural also but what you said makes so much sense that pinch of optimism not having uh, this thing ki ye mera zindagi ka ant hai agar main jrf nahi kar payi to when you attach so much value to one thing we kind of get that Yeah. Uh, that much um, i would not say fear fear is a very very small word um, it feels as if the entire world is going to crumble down matlab yes, uh, you have yes. those suicidal thoughts at time we we face uh, so many students jo hamare coaching mein nahi hote hain but humse youtube ya social media ke through connect mein hote hain jo log apne aap se prepare kar rahe hote hain unko kahin na kahin ye bharosa ho jata hai ki humne itna mehnat kiya hai ki ab to jrf nikalenge and because of any reason they are not able to uh, yeah. get that jrf and unko aisa lagta hai ki bas ab hame apna zindagi jeene ka koi maqsad hi nahi hai yeah but it is always important that you have a plan b in place you know that it is just an exam that is the reason why i always have this thing ki har exam ke baad mein i put in something for students who do not qualify because i know ki jo qualify kar rahe hai wo to khush hai hi na but as yeah. teachers it is important ki hum unke sath khade rahe 
जिन्होंने मेहनत करी बट दे कुड नॉट क्वालिफाई बिकॉज पोटेंशियल उनमें है कहीं ना कहीं कोई मिस्टेक हुआ है इफ दे वर्क अपॉन इट देन सिक्स मंथ्स आपने और दे दी अपनी जिंदगी के तो एक सेवेंटी ईयर्स का स्पैन में मैटर नहीं करता सिक्स मंथ्स हमें हम जब बहुत छोटे रूप में अपनी जिंदगी को देखते हैं हम सिर्फ आज के दिन पे फोकस करते हैं तो हमें कई बातें बहुत बड़ी लगती है रिमेम्बर माई मदर टेलिंग वी दिस ऑलवेज की कभी भी यू हैव स्ट्रेस ओवर एनी थिंग इन लाइफ ऑलवेज थिंक की क्या ये चीज जिस पे आज मैं स्ट्रेस कर रही हूँ ये दस साल बाद मैटर करेगी अगर मैटर करेगी इफ यूर माइंड आंसर यस इट्स गोइंग टू मैटर एज मच एज इट इज मैटर इट मैटर्स टूडे तब तो स्ट्रेस लो अगर दस साल में मैन मैटर नहीं करेगा मेरा एक फेवरेट टॉप अगर जल गया है आज आयरन करते हुए आई नो दस साल बाद आई विल नॉट इवन रिमेम्बर इट सो ठीक है दुख होना इज वन थिंग बट उस दुख में इतना गिर जाना कि आप खड़े ही ना हो पाओ दैट इज अन एदर थिंग सो वेरी वेरी नाइस दैट आई आई रियली लव दिस पार्ट ऑफ द इंटरव्यू वे यू यू शोड योर वॉलरेबल साइड वेर इवन यू हैड दो सेकेंड थॉट की आर मैंने शायद सही नहीं किया है लेट मी नॉट जस्ट सिट फॉर द एग्जाम लेट मी जस्ट सिट फॉर द नेक्स्ट एग्जाम इट इज दैट वॉलरेबल मोमेंट वेयर वी हैव टू बी लिटल ऑप्टिमिस्टिक एंड से कि ठीक है यार दे के देख लेते हैं तो क्या ही होगा नहीं क्लियर yeah. करेंगे नहीं क्लियर करेंगे बिग डील वो है वेरी नाइस वेरी नाइस एंड अगेन वन इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग दैट हाउ इज योर एक्सपीरियंस दिस टाइम वेन यू सैट फॉर द पेपर डिड यू फील दैट पेपर विज ईजी moderately difficult very very challenging what were your thoughts yes uh, ma'am i feel what happens during the exam is as important as what happens before so <laughs> true those three hours uh, they have to be your best three hours so i had gone to the paper with a very optimistic mindset i had prayed that you know let my brain be in its best capacity let me use it to the fullest let me be the most creative uh, and with that thought i had entered the exam hall Uh, of course there is a bit of anxiety and stress that you have because the environment is very uh, serious if i may say so yes yes uh, but while uh, attempting the questions there was a point i vividly remember i had attempted around say half questions of paper 2 uh, and i had a feeling ki is bar ho jayega shay you know it's happening <laughs> uh, but then uh, i panicked a little towards the end because uh, i my strategy was to take three rounds of the question paper in the first round i would attempt the questions that i'm almost 90 to 100% sure about in the second round i would attempt the questions which need more time uh, for me to think about it or i'm confused between two options or i have to use the elimination technique so i would uh, attempt those questions and the third round would be the pure guessing round because there's no negative marking so you have to make a guess random guess yes, right. so i used to attempt the exam in three rounds uh, but in second round i had left the di questions from paper 1 for the second round and unexpectedly they took a lot of my time so which is why i had to uh, haste a little through the third round uh, so that kind of made me a bit anxious uh, but then again i somewhere i was feeling that uh, it was a good experience but i wasn't confident enough to say it out loud uh, so that was the overall feeling that i had regarding the difficulty that. level i think one thing one thing that i want to like just cut you in the middle i want to again focus on this point that uh, even though the di section took a lot of your time but before uh, but before that you have already completed those questions that you were 90 to 100% sure of yes that yes. kind of um helped you get out of that moment where you felt stuck that yeah. kind of pushed you out of that because uh, you knew that you have done your best in the first round and yes. there are so many questions that you know that are going to be right सो आपको पता रहता है तो कहीं ना कहीं वो कॉन्फिडेंस आपको खींच के लाता है सो दैट वॉज अमेजिंग स्ट्रेटेजी आई मस्ट से फर्स्ट कम्प्लीटेड इज क्वेश्चन डिफिकल्टी लेवल इट्स अ वेरी सब्जेक्टिव थिंग एंड मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम्स हेड आई नॉट बीन टॉपर आई वुडेंट बी नोइंग डिफिकल्टी लेवल नाउ आई कैन टेक द लग्जरी ऑफ सेंग दैट इट वॉज इंट वेरी डिफिकल्ट had i not qualified <laughs> i would have said that oh it was very difficult so i think that's a very subjective domain very uh, but if you're prepared enough uh, i don't think nothing uh, anything is you too sail through for you right. or impossible for you true true wonderful and last and uh, my favorite question that i i uh, though it wasn't there uh, in this interview list uh, so to say but then uh, after having this lovely chat with you i think you were the perfect candidate to whom i would want to take this opportunity to ask this question that 
this entire net preparation what valuable lessons did you learn while you were preparing for net because you have such a nice philosophical bent that i think that you are the perfect fit to answer this question yes uh, ma'am as i said the most valuable lesson that i learned from is uh, would be that your journey is as important and as beautiful as the destination uh, of course i was very happy when i received my result and i saw that i had cleared jrf but there are many moments from my preparation journey which i remember where i felt really happy just because i had read something good that day or just because i had completed my daily target so i think my journey was equally beautiful as the destination and that is something that i would try to maintain uh, afterwards also in life i would try to make Absolutely. the journey as beautiful as possible and secondly i think uh, the list of what literature has taught me would be unending uh, net has given me this opportunity to fall in love with literature all over again uh, this simple thought that you sitting in one corner of the world world in your four walls and reading about the mindset and internal discovery of somebody across the world i think it's such a fascinating thought and uh, reading okay. all of those works and about all of those writers there were points when i would tell myself that you know probably i would never read this work again so let me invest my 100% while reading it for the net prep today so i think that um, my love for literature which has been strengthened by this journey i think that will stay with me uh, till my lifetime and i wow. truly truly and, cherish this and i would really want that the passion with which you are saying these things if you can just i i know you've been sharing it with your students in your uh, college where you teach uh, you must be sharing it on a regular basis but please sh- keep sharing that because this platform that we created arpitakarwa.com we created with an intention that we want to create teachers who love teaching so that they can generate students who love learning and i i find you as a perfect fit a perfect example who can take this legacy forward can inspire so many brilliant minds to dive in this world of literature and to uh, know how ideas can shape the world can change the society can make this world a better place yes thank you I so much for being time. such a brilliant student i i just can't thank you enough and pass on my regards to your family members especially to your mom and dad uh tell them that uh, we all are very proud that you have done a fantastic upbringing thank you ma'am that means a lot thank you so much and uh, and again one interesting uh, story i would want to tell you so uh, there was a time in my life when i stayed in akola uh, which is oh. very near to amravati yes uh, and it was uh, that time when i kept on hearing about amravati a lot because i i am not from maharashtra i'm from rajasthan and assam so uh, that was a time when Uh, a lot of discussions used to happen that okay people are going to go to amravati it was just a i think a drive of 2 to 3 hours from akola yes. and from from that point uh, amravati had a very special place in my mind and after meeting you today virtually i think that bond has strengthened so, yes. so that ma'am, now you have a small amravati and you're always welcome there absolutely absolutely and i would want to welcome you to jaipur as well uh, a beautiful city and i know that uh, it has a very rich heritage very rich culture a lot of people love visiting here uh, going around seeing those palaces and uh, hawa mahal and a lot of other beautiful places that we have so any time you are in this town please let us know we just one phone call away our address of the uh, office is mentioned on the website so even if uh, you come at odd hours when nobody is there to pick up the phone you can directly drop into our office and you'll see some That's or the really other person and love to meet you it's very sweet thank you <laughs> thank you so much bhakti and thank you so much for this interview It means a lot to me ma'am it's all I'm my wishing you all, having wishing you best of luck for all the future endeavors and um, the way you smile right now and the kind of um, ca- that charisma that you have inside you i hope that you get more wings to go to places to fulfill your dreams and may god bless you dear thank you ma'am thank you so much thank you thank you so much bhakti bye bye i'll see you very very soon if yes in jaipur or in amravati <laughs> 100% looking forward to that same yes. here Bye bye. Hey bye.